Since the mid-1970s, many parts of Ontario have had two-tier local governance structures, upper regional councils, and more local-focused lower tiers, each with different responsibilities. The provincial government recently launched a review to see whether realignments, amalgamations, or something else might be in order. Here with their perspectives on that, let's introduce Bonnie Crombie, the mayor of Mississauga, Marianne Mead Ward, the mayor of Burlington, and Tom Maracas, who is the mayor of Aurora. Good to have you three along around this table. And I got to say, big time props for f fighting this weather to get here today, because I know you all had long drives to get here. So we're troopers. Thank you very much, indeed. <laughs> Regional governments, as we have suggested, have been around for a very long time. In the main, in the main, have they worked? Let's go in order of population. Mayor Crombie. Have regional governments worked? They may have fulfilled a purpose in the beginning, but certainly Mississauga is in a unique position right now. We're combined with a municipality of 70,000 people, a growing city of about 600,000 in chain, and a large, mature, aging city of 44 years. Mississauga population, almost 800,000. So I would argue the three cities are at different stages of their growth and their, their development. They have distinct identities, and it doesn't always work. There are other options that I hope we can consider. Which we will get into. So that's mm -hmm. the story from Peel Region, according to the Mayor of Mississauga. What's the story in Halton Region, according to the Mayor of Burlington? We're working great. It, it, we are a very efficient level of government, and in Burlington, we're especially efficient. We are a seven-member council, which is the smallest council of any municipality our size. And uh, You're about 120,000? 184,000. Excuse me. Oh, boy, am I out of date? <laughs> 184,000. Okay, yeah, sorry. As of the last sentence, that's what's on our signs now, so okay. that, that's where I know. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we are, we're very efficient. We have, we're the fourth highest uh, councillor to constituent ratio. We're after Mississauga, which is one to 65,000, I think. Brampton is one to 59,000. Vaughan is in that neighborhood, and we're one to 30,000. That's the highest of any municipality our size. So, so Burlington is already working extremely well. And in fact, in the last election, we had the opposite conversation where our our constituents were saying, we think we need more council members. You know, should four people hmm. be determining the fate of 184,000 people? Um, I'm not sure we're going to have that conversation anytime soon <laughs> about increasing council. I'm sure you're going to get that through this yeah, particular provincial government. Yeah, and you know, it, it's okay. working well, but just to put a, to a, f a finer point on it, I one of my first jobs as mayor was to assign people to boards and commissions and standing hmm. committees, and there are 63 of those in Burlington and Halton Region. And so we have nine other duties in addition to the things that we do as, uh, as a councillor okay. or in my case as a mayor. We will dive into more of this as we go along. What's the story up in York Region from the perspective of the town of Aurora? Well, as the smallest municipality represented here, um, I think York Region has done an excellent job uh, representing the region. Uh, the government governance uh, level has done an, an excellent job. Um, right now, currently, we have uh, per uh, per member, elected a member, we, we are represented by 61,000 uh, constituents. And so that's second highest next appeal. And so I think that we've done an excellent job from that perspective. Um, you know, Aurora itself, we actually reduced two seats, uh, you know, this time around. We felt that it was, uh, there was a need to reduce that, uh, the members, just to, to provide a better efficiency within how we provide our governance uh, for our, our, our residents. And I think that that's the type of things that we can look at through this review is, is how, how can we find some efficiencies? But, but uh, putting that in the name of uh, compromising the uniqueness of each municipality, I mm -hmm. think, is, is a problem. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can all agree that, that we don't want to see that uniqueness of each of the municipalities, um, you know, uh, basically compromised for, you know, for in the name and in the sake of efficiency. Right. So. Well, mm -hmm. let's see how this works, because when there's two levels of government, I'm not sure everybody knows what everybody does. Uh, on the one hand, Peel Region has its responsibilities, and on the other hand, Mississauga, Correct. the city, has its. Correct. What's the difference? Who so, does what? So let me say that I don't think two levels of government can be as efficient as one level of government, and I think there will always be more efficiencies that could be found, savings, and that's sort of in our corporate DNA at the city of Mississauga. We're all, we're, I, and in fact, I told the Premier, we're their poster child on savings and efficiencies and cutting red tape, because we're great at that. We've saved $55 million over the past 10 years. That's what we do. Um, so what, there is duplication. So there has to be cost savings. So when you look at 
Primarily, it's the planning department. There are two planning departments. Uh, the, the municipality of Caledon uses primarily the regional planning department. We have our own, so that's duplication. Mm -hmm. Sort of legal department is duplicated. Comms department is duplicated. Certainly engineering, roads, public works. We both sit both levels, both tiers exercise that. The clerk's office, the chair's office, the CAO. Okay, what right? about so policing? Policing, policing is done by well, the region? Well, it's shared cost. So mm -hmm. the city of Brampton and the city of Mississauga share the costs of Peel Regional Police. At Caledon, they have OPP. How about fire? Uh, fire is at the city of Mississauga. We pay mm -hmm. for our firefighters. Now, what could change is sort of what could be utility-based, like, like our um, uh, electri electricity is, is uh, mm -hmm. of course, a shared cost. It's a utility. So waste, wastewater, uh, water, that could be mm -hmm. utility-based. Does everybody in Holton understand who does what? Uh, they they certainly do. Every time there's a snowstorm, they know who, which, <laughs> which level of government uh, does that, and which that's is the it? Mun that's municipality. So Burlington we, gets the plows out. We get the plows out uh, when it's your garbage, though, on mm -hmm. on Monday. So when we have a snowstorm and garbage pickup, uh, that's the region. And so in Halton region, uh, I think that the services that they provide at that level, and uh, certainly policing would be one, there are efficiencies to be had by, by grouping municipalities together and spreading those costs over a, a broader range of, uh, of municipalities. I think we could start to look at sharing uh, transit service. Those things that don't have municipal boundaries. Mm -hmm. uh, planning does, so I think that has to stay at the local level, but um, transit, affordable housing, um, water and wastewater, transportation, those things that don't stop at the border and our residents certainly don't stop at the border, we can get some, we get efficiencies by working with the region. But I don't want to port everything up to the regional level because as soon as you do that, you lose connection right. with your local community. Mm -hmm. But doesn't Minis the region do planning? Because our region does planning. Yeah. They do some. They do They do it at a, at a regional level and, and um, you know, it's not at the, at the ground level. They're not looking at our individual applications other than as a commenting agency. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, other than the natural heritage system, for example, which crosses municipalities, looking at Greenbelt, which we know is, you know, it's, it's protected now, but we have to be vigilant to and make sure. To keep it that and way. we will keep it yeah. that way. We, mm -hmm. just, we just passed a unanimous resolution in Burlington that notwithstanding the fact that that, you know, Schedule 10 is out of Bill 66 for now, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, we will... Schedule 10 out of Bill 66. <laughs> We're getting in the weeds here. We're getting in the weeds. The Green okay. Bill's protected for yeah. now, but yeah. we, be, we need to be vigilant. Do the people in Aurora understand what York Region does for them and what the town of Aurora does for them? I think sometimes it's a bit confusing for some of the residents, uh, but uh, as mentioned, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that that, that I think from a York region perspective that we need to look at, uh, one that I've been big on is, is creating a regional fire service. I think that if you upload that to the region, you do you will find some efficiencies in that system. Um, but as uh, Marianne had mentioned, um, you know, planning, absolutely not. That should mm -hmm. be at the local level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our, our region basically just puts out a, a memo and says that, that you know, whether they, whether they approve with the application or they, they, they disagree with it or, you know, they have no comment. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. that's what we get yep. on the local level. But, you know, planning should be left to the local level. That's what we fought for so many, you know, so many times. And I, I don't want to get into the weeds, but through yeah. the OMB and through LPAC coming through, that was a big fight for that. And mm -hmm. so we, we deserve that on the local level. But I think um, when you speak about what, what do residents understand as far as what's regional, what's what's uh, local. I mean, I have an issue with grass all the time. The region comes in, they cut half the grass, <laughs> and they leave the other half because that's the municipal level. Come on, seriously? Yes. Oh, and so I've, I'm actually going to have a big fight, <laughs> I guess a big fight at the regional level, and, and expect that, that either the yeah. local municipal councils take control of that and cut all the grass, or the region cuts all the grass. Is there a difference between regional grass and local grass? <laughs> well, I hope there isn't. I mean, it Actually, all looks the same to me. Greener. You guys... <laughs> the grass you guys is the better job of the That's you, the point. You've opted in for marijuana, so with all the grass is the same now, right? Okay, anyway, you wanted to get in there and say something. I, I, I did, and so growth, uh, growth management and planning uh, at the municipality of Caledon, a lot of that is done at the region. Hmm. So the difference is that uh, Mississauga has always paid the freight. We've paid 65% of the costs of the region. So we do mm -hmm. get involved in the planning decisions that go on at Caledon. Not that we want to, but it's our taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. So they should be liberated as well. They'd want to control their own destiny, and uh, in some other format they may be able to. We want all, I mean, we certainly want uh, 
all that money that, to be invested in our own priorities, in our, in our own city. We don't think we should pay for the growth of other municipalities, but there are decisions, that planning decisions that have been made at the region appeal that were made because Mississauga taxpayers were paying the freight hmm. and there, there were more cost efficiencies in the decision that was made versus something that the local municipality may have preferred. But when you have Brampton and Mississauga paying the freight, your taxpayers are footing 65% of the bill in Mississauga, 35% in Brampton, and Caledon is left uh, not able to perhaps proceed with what their local council would like because the efficiencies exist when the servicing and the pipes are at the border and we want to build sequentially. Right. Mm -hmm. Let, let's look into some scenarios because, of course, the city of Toronto, in which we are currently situated, had this discussion many years ago mm -hmm. and uh, I guess about 25 years ago, and Mike Harris decided in his wisdom that two levels of government in the city didn't make sense and he created a single-tiered megacity, one single council. Mayor Maracas, if, if Doug Ford went to you and said, you know what, it just doesn't make sense to have all these smaller constituent localities inside bigger York region, I'm just going to get rid of them all and I'm going to create one brand new city of York. What would you think about that idea? He'd have a fight on his hands. Mm -hmm. but, Big fight. But would he win? Well, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, the province has... The authority what would what be so like. bad about doing that idea? I mean, they did it in Toronto. What yeah. would be so bad about well, doing it in New York? I mean, it's as I mentioned earlier, you lose that uniqueness of, of each each community. I mean, Aurora is different from from Vaughan, from Markham, as from East Etobicoke Columbia. is different yeah. from Scarborough. Oh, and I agree. And so, we, I mean, and, and from a planning perspective, you know, what, what we allow to be built within our our borders is absolutely different compared to the other ones. And so now, if you amalgamated us and made us one one big entity, well then. That would just get thrown out the window, and we'd be just be we would have end up with thirty-story uh, towers uh, in Aurora, which is, uh, from my point of view, and I think from all the residents in Aurora, is unacceptable. What That's if they came to you and priorities. said, "We're going to create a brand, and never mind Oakville, never mind Burlington, <laughs> never mind Halton Hills. We're going to create a brand new city of Halton, Halton. <laughs> one tier <laughs> I, of government." I'd run to be the mayor of Halton, but no, we we there's no need for that. We are an efficient level of government as we are, and I think the question that we have to put back to the province is, what problem are you trying to solve? Don't fix what's not broken. Well, We're not what if broken. they come back to you and say the problem is you don't need two tiers of government, you only need one, and you got too many politicians so all told? No. Says who? So what's the right number of politicians per constituent? What's the right number of, of governments? We get efficiencies in the services that we leave at the regional level because they do cross municipal boundaries, but not every service does. You know, do I need to care about a pothole in Milton? No, that can be locally dealt with, you know? So, and they shouldn't have to worry about burnt out streetlights in Burlington. And so there are things at the local level that we can take care of. What we really need from the province mm -hmm. actually is for them to get out of our way when we're trying to be open for business, when we're trying to have planning and economic development. And I can tell you in Burlington, we have over 500 acres of vacant employment land ready, open for business right now. And we're jammed up because Ministry of Transportation of Ontario permits, which used to take 12 weeks, hmm. are now three months. We had, a, we had a development application stalled in Burlington that everyone supported for two years because they couldn't get timely Ministry of the Environment approvals on a brownfield site. These are the things, if you want to talk truly about efficiency in government, it's easy to go after us politicians, mm. but the public are not asking for less politicians. Let's listen to what the public's asking for and let's look at where we can have efficiencies because at the end of the day, what is the right size of a city, of a single, is it one million, is it three million, is it, is it 800,000 in And what's your vision for it to look mm -hmm. like? And, and what, or is it get rid of all municipalities and, and Doug Ford runs the province? Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's where this is going. Nobody has suggested that yet. But yes. let's go with Mississauga here. Absolutely. Uh, and, and Miss Saga, Brampton, and Caledon, Caledon. three distinct, cities, yes. distinct, make up Peel. Right. What if you decided to create one big super city of Peel, which would have a population, I guess, of almost... One, almost 1. 1.5, right, probably one people. of the biggest land masses in the province. Right. Mm -hmm. look, think, look at it. But well, when you look at history, when they amalgamated the city of Toronto, there was a 50% cost increase. Right. There were no savings in amalgamation. Right. There were no efficiencies. Yep. And there was tons of duplication. So there mm. is no savings in amalgamation. And I think that's the bottom line. Yep. We are efficient. Savings, efficiencies are in our corporate DNA. So no, I don't think there are any cost savings in any way if you amalgamate a region. And then you lose the distinctiveness that Tom's been talking about. Mm -hmm. You lose your control over what your vision for your city would look like. But what you do get you want rid to of a whole tier of government. 
I'm happy to get rid of a whole tier of government. I got a whole other plan to do that. <laughs> well. So so let's let let them focus on Mississauga yes. and leave Halton alone. Leave Have Mississauga. you I mean, okay? As that, long as I we're think there, that that's true. That one size doesn't fit all. What mm -hmm. might be right for Mississauga? Because at the end of the day, we're the third largest city. Right. In Ontario, Toronto, mm -hmm. Ottawa, Mississauga, mm -hmm. and Brampton's not far behind. I think they're fifth or sixth. Mm -hmm. yep. So what's right for Peel may not be right for York or Durham or and, Niagara or Halton. And I was right. just going to jump in, and Bonnie's correct, because we, we did have a bit of a discussion on this. I mean, from, from your York region perspective, we want our chair to be elected. Oh, no, don't say right. that. And I'll no, just say that. And I know, I know that, I, and I know that you know, and, right. and other regions don't want to see that happen. But from a York from a York's perspective, we want that, and yeah. so so that's why it is it, a one size fits all approach is not the right thing to do. But you know, looking at creating some consistencies, I think within mm -hmm. within the regions is is a welcome thing. But elected chair didn't work for us. Yes. I did not want a level of government, an elected official who would be have a political agenda. So you were happy we were when Doug Ford changed the oh, rules I, yes, two months was, before election I was, day. I was very pleased. And, and your chair has always been elected. Well, well, for, well for the last no, many actually, years. Actually, the, the the chair before uh, Joyce Savaline fought for it to be elected. Mm -hmm. She felt that that was the right choice democratically. Mm -hmm. That that previously it was uh, appointed or you voted as a regional council for who mm -hmm. your chair was going to be. And so, uh, so so she she put her job on the line. And she ran for that elected position and, and got it. Content and then, to have it be that way now. Absolutely. This is this is about democracy. This isn't well, just about efficiency in government. This is about what kind of representation do we want. So if I, I like to intervene there because we certainly see it differently. We feel that our chair is the chair of a board, the chair of a board of directors, and their job is not to set the agenda, but to move the agenda along and to make mm -hmm. sure to ensure that all three mayors are heard and that the agendas of the mayors are moved forward. That we didn't want that person to be elected like city to manager, come in kind of. to come in with their own agenda, political agenda. And that's what this was about. We very much saw that they were chairing the meeting, motion, recognition, passing, with not having a political agenda, political staff, having their own bureaucracy, and, and having their now? own vision. With, correct. With we an do, appointed chair, Correct. you have that now. Yes, we do. They're okay. chair of a board. Uh, let's get into this since we're here right now. <laughs> You're the only person here who wants to take their city out of the region. Yes. You want to secede. I do. You're the René Levesque of Ontario right now. I'm the Hazel McCallion's our, uh, successor. Our Ontario <laughs> yeah. includes Mississauga. Yes, well, yes, well, yes, yes. Can you, can you sort of uh, play this through for us right now? Because if Mississauga secedes from Peel, mm -hmm. what's... What happens? What's left in Peel? So I can't speculate what the options are, and there are many, but certainly Hazel McCallion felt very strongly about this uh, 15 years ago. It's very important for Mississauga to control our own destiny, and we were probably 600,000 people or less uh, 15 years ago when she started this campaign, about the size that Brampton is today. So if she thought we could go our own way then, certainly Brampton can today. So we become a standalone city. Uh, Brampton, Brampton could be a standalone, standalone city. Absolutely. What about what about we cost Callan? share. We cost share. We create utilities for our water, wastewater, etc. Callan and their law. I can't speculate, but there are lots of options for Callan as well. So regional government basically disappears, and you become your own standalone city. We are the Brampton third does. largest city in Ontario. There are much yeah. large. Well, there are not larger, but there are smaller. There are large cities and smaller cities that are all single tier. I could go through the list. I don't well, Hamilton leave. is Anybody. smaller, well, and it's single tier. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Hamilton, Guelph. Windsor, London, Barry, Sudbury, Thunder Bay, the list goes on. And yet Mississauga, two-tier government. And we're bigger than all of them. So, mm -hmm. Can I just interject? Please. Were any of those, I'm just curious, were any of those um, part of a regional structure beforehand? Did they ever leave from Hamilton the regional was. structure? Hamilton was. Hamilton yeah. was. Mm -hmm. so. Hamilton was a bunch of different you know, that was an amalgamation. Cities. That was it. That was a super city creation. Yeah, yeah. and that was that, that was very controversial. Okay, so you're at the you're time. you're different. Our, our, we from are the very others. different. We're very distinct, and it's because of our size and critical mass. I mean, we're almost eight hundred thousand people. Right. I have, have you talked to the premier about this? Ninety-one thousand businesses, seventy-three Fortune five hundred. Okay, we get it, Mary. We get it. We got it. <laughs> we want to control our own destiny. I, we I want get everyone it. at the table so that we can make decisions that affect our city and including our finances and our funding. Have you met with Premier Ford yet? I have met with Premier Ford. You yes, said I this have. to him. I did. What and did I he... presented the business case and I told them that Mississauga could save $30 million a year. The last time we did this study, we saved over $30 million a year if we were a standalone city. How? And controlling our own because of efficiencies and savings, because of the duplications that exist. I thought that was going to happen in Toronto. That never happened in Toronto. But it will because, well, it's a smaller scale. But we won't have two planning departments, two legal departments, two comms departments, two clerks. We don't won't have a need for a regional chair in their office or this, these uh, city manager, the regional manager. 
manager, etc. Uh, there will be, we could make, as I described to you, we'll cost share police. Uh, water, wastewater, sewage, well, sewage is already contracted out. It could be utility based. What right? was his reaction to you when you said, when you said, unlike everybody else who's having this conversation, we want out? I can't predetermine, but certainly you know, we spoke in his language, which was this cost savings and efficiencies, and there was lots of nodding. I can't predetermine that the outcome will be. Did he but say we forget presented, it? No, he did not. We presented a solid business case on why this is very possible mm -hmm. to move forward in this way. Do other municipalities around Ontario have a view on what, you know, what they do? What should happen with Mississauga? Yeah. No, no. Here, you know what? Here, here's, here's my view. Um, I think this government needs to approach this conversation with a handshake, not a hatchet. So don't go around cutting out levels of government where no one's asking for that, where it's working demonstrably, where people are working together, where the right level of service that does go across municipal boundaries is located there. Just one thing alone, with the region bundling our, our debt, we can go out to market with billions of dollars of debt for our capital infrastructure services, save the taxpayer because we get a better rate when we amalgamate mm -hmm. that. But, but that doesn't mean we should be amalgamating everything else. So we have already looked at what services belong in a collective, what services belong at the local level. Okay, and but so, if Premier so Ford comes to you, Your Worship, and mm -hmm. says, the status quo is not an option. We're going to mm -hmm. look for some kind of efficiencies here. There's going to be some kind of whatever, reimagining, de-amalgamating, re-amalgamating, right. something. What would you tell him to do? I would tell him to look in his own backyard. I well, would tell him to look at the provincial inefficiencies that we have in planning, uh, for sure, in transportation and environmental services, that we need their help. And I would also look to them to say, we are delivering frontline social services at our regional level, and the province hasn't kept up with your share of funding. We're doing all the work for you. So if we want to truly have a conversation about efficiency and effectiveness mm -hmm. in government, I don't accept the scope that it is just about a couple of municipal politicians sitting around a table. No, mm -hmm. this has to be bigger than that, or we do a disservice to the community and the conversation. And that will be the message I bring to you uh, Ken Seiling and to Michael Fenn, who uh, I'm delighted used to work in Burlington. That's right, <laughs> so Ken Seiling did. What we're course, hoping yeah. to, yeah. So, um, you know, we, sure, let's have the conversation about efficiency and effectiveness in government. And we'll tell you what, what we think the opportunities are at our level, which we've essentially already done. But there's opportunities at yours okay. too. In York Region, if you were to have a conversation with Doug Ford and he were to say, Tom, we love what you're doing in Aurora, but... You know, too many politicians up there, too many levels of government. We're looking for efficiencies. We're going to have to reamalgamate something. What would you suggest? Well, I mean, I would be, I'd say you keep, you're not going to amalgamate anything in York Region from my perspective, but you can look at, you can find some efficiencies by reducing some of the representation. Um, and you can. Smaller councils? Smaller, smaller councils, smaller, smaller regional council. Um, I think you can, you can do that. You can look at eliminating some, some, but not, not amalgamating. Because I think amalgamating is, as I said, you, you lose what makes our communities unique. How many cities and how, how many constituent municipalities within York Region? Well, there's nine. Nine, there's nine, nine. municipalities. Nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, if, what if the Premier said, nine's too many. We're going to pick four. You guys amalgamate how you want. Aurora can link up with yeah. whatever. But to what purpose? To what to end? To what purpose? To what to end? To what end? Fewer councils, more efficient government. Well, we but that's could not, reduce You don't need to numbers. do that. You can just reduce the numbers without, without changing the uh, boundaries. And so I think that's a better way mm -hmm. of looking at it. And, and that's, that's is what I think that, that regional council from York, as well as myself, will be bringing to the table and, and having those conversations. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled at the fact that at least that they didn't come in, as Marianne mentioned, that they didn't come in with the hatchet. Mm -hmm. They decided to have proper consultation mm -hmm. and they're going to listen to us. And, and I hope that they're sincere when they say that they're going to listen to each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And I think they will. And I think my message will be similar to Marianne's in that for me, it's one size does not fit all. Mm -hmm. yep. All the regions are They've very said distinct that, actually. and very yep different and certainly mm -hmm. Mississauga is an anomaly being the size that we are being the third largest city Brampton being I think they're the fifth or the sixth largest mm -hmm. city so what works for us we may not work for Aurora or for Halton Hills or Burlington I got sure. some numbers here let's put the Sheldon you want to put these up mm -hmm. let's do this middle of page three here York region has 1.2 million people living there and 79 elected politicians between the town and city councils as well as the regional council Halton apparently has a little more than half a million people, 43 elected politicians, so roughly the same ratio as York Region. Peel has a population of 1.4 million, 
and only 31 elected politicians. I told you we were efficient. Well, hang on now. <laughs> Toronto, your beloved capital city, oh. he said with tongue in cheek, has a population of 2.8 million. But after the reduction of city council from earlier last summer, which everyone okay. will remember, 25. only 26 elected municipal politicians now. 25 in the mayor. 25 in the mayor. Mm -hmm. Why, uh, why so few in Peel relative to everybody else? Well, we we have a good ratio of region, uh, population by uh, representation by population. Mm -hmm. Other than mm -hmm. in Caledon, because there are five mm -hmm. uh, Caledon members at the region of Peel, so there are actually actually there are 25 of us at regional council. The, right. You get the extra members because in Caledon and in Brampton there are some councillors that are municipal and then there are others that are regional. Mm -hmm. So you combine and you get the extra six. But at Peel Regional Council there are only 25 of us. So I think we have good representation by population other than in Caledon because it's such a large mm -hmm. uh, large area you can't mm -hmm. always, you, you know, the ratios change. Does it feel like the, the right number change. that you have right now? I have 11 councillors and myself the mayor, 12. That feels like the right number. Now if you look at it from a perspective of federal uh, provincial ridings, we have six. Now, I think that is probably about 100,000 uh, residents mm -hmm. per representa mm -hmm. representative. Mm -hmm. Ours is about 60,000 60, right. per representative, so, so it's a little were, lower. So the, the, the federal and the provincial boundaries mirror each other, basically. We would have six. So you you'd have a council of point, six. Correct, but at some point you can't do that because you may have Too few? the population and like how many would you have? You know, you would have very, very few, you based have, on your population, well, yeah. very few representatives. Hmm. Very Could few. you do that in Halton? So uh, Halton and, and Burlington is unique among Halton because we have seven a seven member council so we're seven out of the 24 if you look at the 43 that you mentioned uh, Oakville Milton and Halton Hills all, all have two representatives per ward uh, our council did away with that in the 90s and said we're gonna have one councillor who is a city councillor and a regional council that's it so that's so we have we have six plus the mayor and uh, so will those other councils uh, you know want to cut the size of their city council to have just one representative per ward. They could look at that model. We've done it successfully. Uh, but at the regional level, which I think is, is where the discussion is, we're 24. And, and mm -hmm. that's a good size for 600,000 people growing to, uh, that's planning for growth up to a million. So that is very comparable to, um, you know, to Peel for sure and some of the other larger municipalities. So you don't want more members? Mm -hmm. We're not looking for more city council members for Burlington. I don't think we need more at the region for sure. Um, and in each municipality will have to decide if they want to, to make changes to their local councils uh, if, if they think that's efficient. But the challenge is when you cut politicians, you add administrative staff. Mm -hmm. So what's that's the what trade off? Toronto. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, so what's the trade off for democracy? You have fewer people that are directly elected. accountable to the, to the electorate replaced by staff who are not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the argument really is that, that more elected officials who are responsible that you can toss out every four years is a better system of democracy. Okay. So let's so get. Steve, Sorry, sure, sure. I just want to say those numbers are a bit skewed, and I'll explain mm -hmm. why. Sure. Uh, York Region has 79 due to the fact that we have nine municipalities. Yeah. Right. So we have a yeah, higher number of municipalities, and so mm -hmm. that way that number's up. But at the regional level, we only have 20. Right. right. And, we have and, so, and, I, and as right. I mentioned earlier, our representation is we're, each member represents 61,000 on average. And, and so we're, we're number two to PL when it comes to representation. And does population. that feel like the right number to you? Um, I think so. Can, can we tweak it? Can we maybe lower it? I mean, I'm, I've always advocated that Aurora needs one more seat, mm -hmm. but we have, we've looked at different structures as far as maybe a weighted voting system where you don't need to add any more members, but you, you add that weighted voting system mm -hmm. so you have more votes And if member. the region would continue, Mississauga felt very strongly that we didn't want to increase the size of Peel Regional Council. If you mm -hmm. recall, in the last term, Brampton came forward and wanted additional councillors, and we said, okay, we agree. You could have two, take them from Caledon, so we don't change the size of mm -hmm. Peel Regional Council. They were Caledon being overrepresented. Um, and then they changed their formula and wanted to add four and give us four, and we said, no, that's a non starter with us. Mm -hmm. We're not adding eight councillors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's, uh, in our remaining moments here, I do want to get into some discussion about what, your, what you anticipate from the province coming forward. If we were having the same conversation, mm -hmm. say six months ago, with politicians from the city of Toronto, uh, you know, they would soon be learning that they were about to be cut in half and they were going to have no input into it and they were going to be very unhappy about it and very shocked about it. Mm -hmm. I want to know, because that's of course what the Ford government ended up doing. It mm -hmm. brought in a fait accompli. Uh, how concerned are you that this panel that is being created to listen to the concerns 
is actually going to listen to what you have to say and you're going to be content with what they come up with. I have a lot of respect for the two individuals that have been put in charge, Ken and Michael Fenn. They're so, not the deciders, as well, you know. Well, no, they're not. But they are, they are doing the listening, and they are the ones that are tasked with coming up with recommendations. So I think the best case scenario for probably everybody is listen to those municipalities like Mississauga that are actively asking for changes. Listen to that. Work with those that are, you know, that's the handshake approach. Mm -hmm. and, and really don't bother with the other municipalities where there, A, is no problem because there's, where's the business case that 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 any change is going to save us money where is that that has not materialized it's just this assumption so so that's not good governance right out of the gate so leave alone the ones that are not asking for change and and work with the ones that are that would be the best case and I hope that message gets through and then clean up your own backyard <laughs> <laughs> you did mention that yeah. not go there. Mayor Tom are you how confident are you that the that this panel will a listen to you and B take recommendations to the premier that C, you will like at the end of the day? Well, I think just for, as I mentioned before, just from the fact that they've, they've gone down this road to say that we are going to have some consultation, we are going to work with you, we are going to meet with you. Uh, York Region is actually meeting with uh, the minister's office uh, mid-February. They're coming down to interview each of the mayors and yep. our regional chair and to have those discussions and, and say, what is it that you're looking for? And, mm -hmm. and as was mentioned earlier, who best to understand how the regional model works and the local model works than the people that are actually in there doing the job, and that's us. And so, you know, listen to us, listen to what we have to say, listen to our recommendations. We're gonna look for efficiencies because we're all looking for those efficiencies, and we'd love to provide a, a better level of regional governance for our constituents. And, and so listen to us, and we'll get it done. Last word to the Mayor of yes, Mississauga. thank you. So I am meeting the Minister uh, and the advisors, um, I think, next week, in mm -hmm. fact. Minister so, Steve Clark? Yes, and the advisors, uh, Fenn and Sealing, next week. Um, and I think the way Mississauga handles things is we just present the best business case. If you're looking for what is your outcome, what is the goal, that you're what, is, what are you hoping to achieve, and if it's to find efficiencies and savings, this is how you're going to do it, and this is how we've done it, and this is what I propose. So we will go back, and we'll do more consultation, and we'll do those same feasibility studies that we did 15 years ago to prove the level of savings that can be achieved to suit our goal, which is to control our own destiny. Mm -hmm. But I can't predetermine the outcome. Mm -hmm. I can't provide, we don't know what mm -hmm. the outcome will, do, will be. We don't know, we don't know what their goal is, what their vision is, and what they'd like to see going forward. Indeed. They haven't indicated. So. Stay tuned, everybody. <laughs> I do, this is lightning in a bottle, you know, this whole issue. Because when Bill Davis brought in regional governments 45, 46, 47 years ago, he nearly lost the next election. Mm -hmm. People were unhappy. Yeah. And then we had four and a half decades of people getting used to it. Mm -hmm. And now here we go again. Marianne Mead Ward is the mayor of Burlington. Thanks for coming in along the QEW. Uh, Bonnie Crombie is the mayor of Mississauga. How'd you get here today? I took the train. You took the train? I did. Whoa, uh, okay. Great example of regional. Took the 401. <laughs> yeah. Tom Arrakis is the mayor of Aurora. How'd you get here today? 404. 404. All right. There we go. Good to have you all around you our table us. here at TV Thank Ocean. You. Thanks, Thanks for having us, Steve. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.